the names of 30 suspected war criminals. Uh, CBC has decided not to show that list because we don't have any evidence about these people. Now, the controversy about this, despite the fact that it's got high-profile backing from Jason Kenney, from uh, Minister Vic Tates, and the Prime Minister, is that the government's provided very little information about these suspected war criminals. Is it appropriate to get the public involved tracking them down, uh, naming them? Is this just a scapegoating and the government gets in the public eye? Or is this an effective way to catch people who may be war criminals? Uh, I like Evan, but I think he's been CBCized. I mean, seriously. The CBC won't let any rumor against our troops. It won't stop. They'll publicize all those. But they wouldn't actually publish the names and faces of wanted war crime suspects in this country. Sometimes I wonder which side the CBC is on. Someone who, uh, who has an interesting view on this and is in a position to maybe do something is our guest now, who joins us live from Victoria, British Columbia. I'm talking about the Member of Parliament from Calgary West, Rob Anders. Rob, thanks very much for joining us today. It's an honor to be on the show. I'm learning a lot. Uh, I've got to say those segments about the other state broadcasters in the world and the size that the CBC has in relative to the other ones is very impressive. Well, thanks. Now, I, I'm not going to ask you to contradict Minister James Moore, the Heritage Minister, because I don't want to cause a ruckus, and you are part of the Conservative Party, and I'm not going to ask you to, uh, to contradict your minister. But you have actually taken the question about the CBC to your constituents. You conducted a poll and over 250, resp 250 responses of your own constituents answered a survey question. Can you tell us what the people in Calgary West want to do with the state broadcaster? Absolutely, Ezra. Uh, we uh, sent out uh, to a list of 2,000 people who want to stay in contact with the Member of Parliament's office a questionnaire uh, asking what they wanted to see done with the CBC. 81% uh, of the people who contact us, 250 responses, so it's 12.5%, almost 13% response rate, a very decent response rate. 81% uh, said they wanted to see a defunding of the CBC. 9% uh, uh, said they wanted to see only northern communities and French language programming. And 10% uh, said they wanted to see a maintenance of the status quo. So, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you this, Ezra. Uh, the official uh, word from the government now is, quote, we have made a commitment to balance the budget uh, by 2015. We were elected on that commitment and we will keep our word. Everyone in government has to do their part to contribute to balancing the budget. The CBC will be participating in a strategic and operating review to find savings and efficiencies. And it, sorry, find savings and inefficiencies. So that, to me, uh, provides some hope that in this time of global economic downturn and recession, uh, that we're going to see some cost savings here at least. I, I've went ahead and I've put together a petition, and I have to admit there's a mistake in this petition, because here I say that we, the undersigned residents of Canada, draw the attention of the House to the following, that the government of Canada funds the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation to the sum of roughly a billion dollars per annum, but as, as I've heard on your show here, it's actually 1.1 1 .1 billion that the vast amount of uh, government Canada funding gives the CBC an unfair advantage over its private sector competitors, and therefore your petitioners call upon Parliament to end the public funding of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. So we'll see how many responses we get back, and I, I suspect I'll have a chance here in September to present those, and other members of Parliament will do the same. I appreciate you coming on the show to talk about this, because I know there's caucus solidarity and cabinet confidences, and I'm not asking you to, to, to violate your caucus confidences, but let me ask you the question in a different way. Do you think there are other members of Parliament in the Conservative government, your fellow Conservatives, who would sympathize or agree with the sentiments expressed by your Calgary West voters? Do you think anyone else will circulate this petition, for example? I, I, I believe that there will be other members of Parliament who will have an, an opportunity and will present this petition on behalf of their constituents who, who fill these out. Uh, I know there are other members of Parliament uh, who are, are concerned about this very same issue, and uh, we'll see where it goes in the fall. But uh, I, I tremendously appreciate the public education that you're performing here. I've learned today, for example, that $1.1 billion of the $1.8 billion budget of the CBC comes from the Government of Canada, and the, and the CBC is one of the largest state broad broadcasters per capita in the world. And I think those are, those are good things for people to know. I only have time for one more question, Rob. I, I, I guess I'd like to ask why. What motivated you to put the survey to your constituents? Well, uh, I think it's just a question of fairness. 
Uh, is it fair, and I ask this question kind of rhetorically or generically, but is it fair that one broadcaster receives a $1.1 billion subsidy vis-a-vis -vis their other market competitors when there are so many competitors in the marketplace? It's, it's not as though it's, it's the only game in town. And, uh, you know, as you've said, 75 years later, you know, we really have to ask these fundamental questions. Rob Anders, uh, MP for Calgary West, joining us today from Victoria, British Columbia. I really appreciate you keeping us posted and giving us the straight goods from your own poll, which is the most current uh, public opinion survey we have on the subject. Thanks for joining us today.